The independent state of Croatia was created when the Axis powers invaded Yugoslavia. And on the 15th of June 1941, the NDH, as this state was called in short, joined the tripartite pact. You're going to learn about this process in this video. Keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan and um, you know, I like to cover history. If you find it interesting, well, consider subscribing. Please hit that notification bell. If you want to support me, you can do so via Patreon, PayPal and a super thanks. The links are all below the video. Croatia was a part of the kingdom of Yugoslavia. During the interwar years, there was much discontent among the Croats about their treatment by the Serbs. The Croats felt oppressed by the Serbs and the result was the emergence of extreme movements and the most noteworthy was known as the Eustasia, the Croatian Revolutionary Movement. This movement was founded abroad by Anta Pavlic, who called himself the Poglavnik, which means leader or can be translated as first foremost. This was around the time that King Alexander I of Yugoslavia announced his royal dictatorship, which happened in 1929. Now from abroad, the Ustasha carried out sabotage and terrorist actions. Most noteworthy was what happened in France in 1934. When King Alexander visited the country, he was assassinated. If after this, many of the Ustasha members, they fled to Italy where they were interned. Now, can you describe the Croatian Ustasha, these ultranationalists? Can you describe them as fascists? Well, not per se, because his ideology was drawn from Croatian ultranationalism, Italian fascism, German Nazism, authoritarianism and peasantism. So it was not a one-on-one -on -one copy of neither Italian fascism or German Nazism. But they for sure were anti-Yugoslav and they wanted a large Croatian state. Many of the Eustachia leadership came from the petty bourgeois milieu of Zagreb and the Zagorje hinterland. But its foot soldiers were more likely to be students or workers and peasants from the poorer areas of Croatia, especially the Dalmatian hinterland Kordun, Banija, Lika, and Western Herzegovina. I'd say they can rather be viewed as a terrorist organization as they successfully carried out the assassination of the Yugoslav king in France. Its leader, Pavlic, once stated, Knives, revolvers, automatic pistols, and time bombs are the bells that ring in the dawn and rebirth of the Croatian state. On German pressure, the Kingdom of Yugoslavia signed the Tripartite Pact on the 25th of March. But then, two days later, Serbian military officers staged a coup d'etat in Belgrade. Regent Paul was forced to resign and King Peter II, who had now come of age, was proclaimed to be the new king. When Hitler heard this, he flew into a rage and he vowed to destroy the country. And this happened from the 6th of April 1941. On Orthodox Eastern Sunday, Operation Retribution started and it started with a merciless bombing campaign of Belgrade in which thousands of lives, both military and civilian, were lost. And within 12 days, the Kingdom of Yugoslavia was toppled. But before that, the independent state of Croatia was proclaimed. On the 10th of April, the Germans entered Zagreb and Croatia seceded from Yugoslavia. The proclamation was stage managed by the Germans. The borders of the NDH extended over almost 40% of the former Yugoslav kingdom. It covered most of modern day Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, as well as some parts of modern day Serbia and Slovenia. Catholic Croats amounted to around half of the 6.5 million people. It had 750,000 Muslims, 40,000 Jews and 1.9 million Serbs. It was called the independent state of Croatia, but how independent was this state really? Well, in reality, it was a puppet state of the Axis powers where both the Germans and the Italians wielded great influence over. 
Germany wanted economic advantages and privileged status for the ethnic Germans living there. The Germans were heavily influenced in the country's economy. From day one, there were German soldiers on the streets of Zagreb and diplomatic representatives occupied important places. And therefore, the NDH can be hardly called independent. Now, officially, the country was a kingdom with the Italian royal that was named Tomislav II on the throne, but he never resided there. Ante Pavlic, who at the time of the independence declaration of the Croats um, was still in Italy, he became the leader of the NDH. On the 13th of April, he returned to Zagreb after 12 years of exile and to a bunch of Italian journalists, he stated the following. Today's restoration of Croatian independence has its foundation in historical and ethnic factors. The pan slavist movement spread throughout the entire world the belief that we are one people with the Serbs. This is not true as the Croats are not Slavs according to race, but rather are Croats by their origin and nothing else. Without repeating the known differences in religion and culture, the two nations are differentiated ethnically, even in a somatic sense. So how did the average Croat view the rise of the NDH and the Pavlic? A significant part of the population, generally in towns and particularly in Zagreb, viewed it favorably. The Ustashas had a modicum of popular support in Western Herzegovina and Lika, but virtually nowhere else. However, most people accepted the resurrection of the Croatian state with the feeling that the war had ended quickly and that the worst had been avoided. But in reality, the worst was about to come. From the get-go, Jews were arrested on the streets. First killings occurred in May and confinement in camps that summer. By the end of the year, Pavlic stated that there were no more than 12,000 Jews left in the NEH. But not only Jews were targeted, since the country had a larger population of Serbs. Statements were made to expel, convert or kill them. Mass expulsions to German-occupied Serbia started. It is hard to say how many actually were expelled since many went on their own initiative, or rather they fled. Numbers of people fleeing were between 180 and 200,000. Now a degree formalized concentration camps. The largest was the Yasanovic complex, which was a death camp where Serbs, Jews and Roma Sinti and undesirable Croats would meet their fate in horrifying ways. There were also concentration camps for children, such as Sisak and Jastrovasko. Many Serbs and Jews and Roma Sinti, they died at the hands of Ustasha death squads that roamed the countryside, butchering people. Men, women and children were slaughtered in the most horrifying ways imaginable. The Germans were appalled by this violence and attaché for the Gestapo wrote the following to Heinrich Himmler. The Eustachia committed their deeds in a bestial manner, not only against males of conscript age, but especially against helpless old people, women and children. The number of the Orthodox that the Croats have massacred and sadistically tortured to death is about 300. Thousand. The Wehrmacht also used a lot of violence in the region and also used violence against non-combatants, um, but they had a different take on it because they believed that their violence was needed and that the Croatian ultranationalists did it out of anger. Ustasha brutality was blamed for fueling the armed rebellion that the German army sought to quash. Officially, Croatia joined the tripartite pact on the 15th of June 1941. This would pave the way for the Croatian Legion, where Croatian men fought in Wehrmacht uniforms on the Eastern Front. More on that in another video. If you want to learn about the Croatian Legion, click here and click here for the video about Croatia and World War II. Thanks for watching and bye for now.